If you're like most individuals, you might assume that Japan is a thriving nation with a consistently growing economy, akin to other countries. However, the reality is that Japan has not experienced significant growth over the past few decades. In the 1990s, the Japanese economy endured a prolonged recession following the burst of the renowned economic bubble from the 1980s, and the nation has struggled to fully recover since then. When assessing the standard of living based on PPP per capita, Japan has seen no improvement for three decades. Moreover, the Nikkei 225, the stock index representing major Japanese companies, reached its peak in 1990 and, even after three decades, has yet to return to that level. In contrast, over the same period, the U.S. stock index has shown a staggering 1,000% return. This era is often referred to as Japan's lost decades. So what transpired in Japan? What led to its economic stagnation and the prolonged absence of recovery? This is the subject we will delve into in this video. Before we proceed, kindly consider subscribing to our channel to receive more captivating videos like this one. Now let's explore how the U.S. trapped Japan and contributed to its economic stagnation lasting for decades. The Economic Rise of Japan In the aftermath of the Second World War, the Japanese economy lay in ruins due to the devastating impacts of the war, including the infamous atomic bombings. The consequences extended beyond economic devastation, encompassing emotional trauma as well. Adding to the humiliation, the United States assumed administrative control in Japan through peace treaties, concluding the war. This granted the U.S. government not only authority over the day-to-day -day operations of the country, but also the establishment of American military bases throughout Japan. While proponents of the U.S. actions argue that they were aimed at aiding Japan's reconstruction, more discerning thinkers posit that while there may have been genuine interest in helping Japan, the primary motive was to exert influence over the Japanese government and society, establishing a significant military presence in the region. Over the ensuing decades, Japan underwent a remarkable transformation from being one of the weakest and poorest nations globally to emerging as the second largest economy, trailing only the United States. Economists and historians largely attribute this astounding growth to a robust education system and growth-oriented economic policies. Japan innovatively manufactured high-quality products at cost-effective prices, allowing these goods to permeate global markets. Japan swiftly developed manufacturing expertise, producing not only top-tier products, but also doing so with remarkable efficiency and global appeal. Iconic names such as Sony, Canon, Nikon, Toyota, Mitsubishi, and Honda became synonymous with excellence. Sony Walkmans graced the streets, Japanese cars filled the roads, and Japanese-made televisions broadcasted cartoons for kids. These companies held significant global influence. Concurrent with Japan's business success, the stock market experienced a boom, with the Nikkei stock average reaching unprecedented heights. Additionally, real estate values soared, with commercial land prices surging over 300% in the 1980s. Reports even suggested that one square mile in Tokyo's government center was worth more than the entire state of California. How the U.S. Trapped Japan Using the Plaza Accord Agreement In the midst of Japan's rapid economic growth, where its homegrown industries were dominating global exports and outpacing the growth of the United States, the hegemony of the U.S. came into play. Fearing the unchecked rise of Japan, the United States, alongside other G5 countries, including West Germany, France, and the United Kingdom, entered into an agreement in 1985 to devalue the U.S. dollar and the German Deutschmark relative to the yen. This landmark agreement, known as the Plaza Accord, was signed in September of that year at the Plaza Hotel in New York City, with the aim of curbing the expanding U.S. current account deficit, which had reached 
3% of gross domestic product. The objective behind depreciating the dollar was to stimulate U.S. exports and foster growth in both Japan and European countries. Typically, economies driven by exports prefer a weaker currency to enhance the competitiveness of their goods in the global market. However, the appreciating yen had the opposite effect, dampening Japan's export potential. To counter this, the Bank of Japan initiated a series of interest rate cuts starting in January 1986, reducing the benchmark discount rate from 5% to a mere 2.5% in just over a year. These rate cuts were consistently justified by the Bank of Japan as necessary to stabilize the exchange rate rather than addressing domestic economic concerns. The combination of a strong yen and lower interest rates spurred a massive spending spree among the Japanese populace. Fueled by accumulated savings and the prosperity of the export-led manufacturing sector, individuals and companies capitalized on the appreciating yen to acquire foreign assets, including notable properties like the Rockefeller Center in New York and golf courses across the U.S. The easing of monetary policy also led to a surge in demand for loans, eagerly met by Japan's banking sector. Borrowers, in turn, used real estate as collateral, driving up land values. As these assets were leveraged to obtain more funds, the cycle continued, further inflating stock and property prices. By the late 1980s, asset prices had escalated significantly, forming a bubble evident in soaring stock and property markets. Despite attempts to intervene, such as the Bank of Japan's move to increase interest rates in May 1989 and the introduction of a consumption tax to temper consumer demand, these measures were too little and too late. The Nikkei 225 skyrocketed to nearly 39000 by the end of the year, marking a staggering 60% gain in the stock market over the final two years of the decade. However, as the 1990 commenced, the Nikkei experienced a sharp crash, wiping more than $2 trillion off the market in the first year of the new decade. And between 1991 and 2001, Japan's economy entered a deep recession, known as Japan's lost decade. What happened after the crash? The Japanese economy witnessed a sharp downturn as an asset bubble burst, and its global standing never fully recovered. By August 1990, following the central bank's fifth interest rate hike, the Nikkei plummeted to half of its peak. Land prices started a downward spiral in 1991, with average prices in Japan's six major cities for commercial, residential, and industrial properties dropping by 15% during the year. This crisis not only eroded consumer confidence, but also hindered investment, leading to prolonged periods of deflation throughout the decade. Despite various fiscal stimulus measures implemented by the government, the economy struggled to rebound. Many banks incurred substantial losses as highly leveraged firms and investors defaulted on debt, resulting in elevated non-performing loan ratios. To address these challenges, numerous banks were compelled to merge and consolidate their bad loans. Some businesses faced closures, while others experienced a slowdown in production, losing their competitive edge. The nation, once known for guaranteed lifelong employment, grappled with rising unemployment, particularly affecting recent graduates and young workers. Despite the central bank's efforts, including reducing interest rates to zero for an extended period, the recession persisted. Land prices in major Japanese cities dropped by 15%, leaving homeowners owing more than the value of their homes. The government attempted to restore confidence through large-scale stimulus packages, constructing infrastructure like roads and bridges, even when not entirely necessary, to generate new jobs. While these efforts provided a boost to the economy, they failed to fully alleviate the malaise and, in the long run, contributed to the country's deficit. The turning point came with the quantitative easing program initiated by Japan's central bank in 2001, 
lasting until 2006. By 2003, the GDP had achieved a healthy 2% growth rate, and exports rebounded, partly fueled by China's emergence into the global marketplace, as many Chinese products relied on Japanese components. Will China become the next Japan? Here we stand at another global crossroads. China has ascended to the position of the world's second largest economy, primarily owing to its vast population. The United States has already sought assistance from its allies to preempt any potential rise of another nation to superpower status. The trade war, semiconductor export controls, and the prohibition of Chinese companies are among the measures taken by the U.S. to contain China's rise to the top spot in the global economy. Do you believe the U.S. will intensify these measures to curb China's growth, akin to its approach with Japan? Share your thoughts and leave comments below. If you appreciate our content, hit the like button to show your support. Most importantly, subscribe to our channel to stay updated with compelling videos covering events across Asia.